Hello, everybody. How are you? Hey, how's it going? It's, Welcome back. It's going okay. You know, it's been a long day, not gonna lie. A long Wednesday. Um, <laughs> you know, is, was that like our uh, our midnight, you know, slow jams radio talk? Hey, welcome back to the Bodacious Rant with Burning Rye. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I was trying something different, and it doesn't feel right now. But you know, it's fine. Let's just roll with it. Double down on it. You know. <laughs> a lot of the people loved it. I'll speak for them. Okay, <laughs> we know what they like. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Just, just like, <laughs> just did some too. Anyways, uh, we're here with another review of you guys named it. I'm sure you guessed it. I don't know. Uh, book of it's in the title. Yeah, it is in the <laughs> title. It's all in the slate. All that good stuff. The Book of Boba Fett, Episode Five, and it's. It's it's good that it's a great episode, definitely the strongest one of the season, but it's not even about Boba Fett. And that's uh, I got to give be even though it's such a great episode, I'm giving this right now a 3 out of 5 strictly oh. just because Boba's not even in it and this is his show. Like, and I know what some of you guys are thinking if you saw episode Mandalorian season 2 um like, well, they, they wasn't his episode with Ahsoka Tano, Bo-Katan, Boba Fett. It's like, no, 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 no. It still was his show. He was still involved. They were introduced in the show. Like, you can't say mm. the same thing about this. Like, okay, yes, Mando is an established character and everything. However, it's called the Book of Boba Fett, not the Book of Mando. So that's why I'm giving it such a low rating. But what about you, Bird? What would you feel about it? Oh, I mean, I give this episode a five out of five. Fantastic. This is an, is an amazing episode. I mean, it's probably one of, the, like, the best 40 minutes of Star Wars I've ever seen, to be honest. So, I mean, like, in a vacuum, I would give this a five out of five. Um, as a episode five of Boba Fett show, it's like it's like a zero or a one. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, kind of like, hold on. Like like you said, like, this is very much like a meanwhile episode. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. Which you know, a I guess it's it, it's like you know, I guess they they have been doing that lately in TV, where there'll be like one episode in a season that kind of like shows you a different like side of whatever's going on, which is fine and stuff. But uh, for how not well the the story of this show has been going on for the most part and how like we've been almost begging for any sort of meaningful uh progression in the story to happen for this episode to come where it came it's like ugh, that man that that's kind of like a okay like that's a that's a definite choice but you know what I, i'm okay with it because i don't really care about boba fett at this point and they haven't given me reason to care about boba fett but i love and boba uh fett. I, I don't <laughs> i really don't i'm gonna just say it right now i never did and they, they were they were kind of winning me over in man season two and then this show came out <laughs> so you know to have this little reprieve from boba me personally I really dug it. They're <laughs> such a monster. Just be okay, because again, yes, I got super excited in season two with him, and thinking, oh my god, oh, his show is gonna be fucking amazing. Or it's no, you're not amazing, but that's gonna be badass for sure. Yeah. And the only like last episode and maybe episode two were the good episodes, but even then, they were still yeah. riddled with certain issues in it. So it's like. Mm-hmm. It makes me... Before we get started in the spoilers, I'm like, Favreau, Rodriguez, you guys kind of suck with Boba Fett. So, with Boba, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mandalorian, great, because had this episode been part of the Mandalorian, I'm like, oh my god, what a great start for season three. This is fucking amazing. Yeah, it felt like a pilot. I mean, I mean not a pilot, like a, like a, like a premiere episode. Yeah, and that's, season three. but that's why I'm giving it a three out of five. I'm like, it's a very jaded one, like three... Three for Boba because in a vacuum though, what would you give it? Oh, like, I would definitely it, like give it. I would thing. give it a four, out of, maybe. Okay, okay, I would give it a solid four, maybe a five, just because there were a couple things I was like, yeah, I would have done this differently and stuff. But honestly, again, for Mandalorian, this is getting me hyped for Mandalorian season three. Am I re- excited for the next two weeks of Boba? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit because of. You know, if it's more Mandalorian, then yeah, like I mean, I'll be excited for yeah. next week. But until we find he out, just, <laughs> he just he just showed up like John Cena to just take over the show. And you know what? At this point, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you see me. Now you don't. 
Magic Man. All right. Magic Man. Well, let's get started with the spoilers then, shall we? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go just, just dig right into this because uh, there's a lot of stuff that I want to talk about. It's so cool. All right, spoiler session. If you guys haven't seen it, get out. If you have, stick around. We're going to dive into it. So, man, like I said, I just, I thought Bo was going to pop up a little bit in this one. Not even mentioned. Not even, not even around for the most part. Not until like the last minute <laughs> of the episode. But I was very surprised. But overall, like I said, for a Mando, I'm just gonna call it the Book of Din Djar. That's basically what it is at this uh, for this episode at least, um, the chapter of Din Djarin, really. The, no, 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 the chapter of Boba. <laughs> I guess, but um, it was really cool. Like when he when you he arrives at this like butcher shop or something. There's all those like mm-hmm. dog aliens there. Um, his fight with uh, back to Bounty Hunter. I thought that was an interesting thing because I thought he was kind of on the journey with. Bo Katan and stuff, but I guess he's kind of yeah. That was a very interesting choice. I guess me. I mean, the only thing I could think of maybe is taking space from Bo Katan while she recruits more Mandalorians. He was I, maybe he was trying to find the covert to maybe help potentially recruit them. We don't know, but after he kills those dudes epically, especially with the black saber, ends up cutting yeah, himself. The dark saber. Oh yeah, dark saber. I'm sorry, I thought it was black saber, but anyways, it is black too. Doesn't matter. Um, you know, cutting his leg at first when I saw it, I was like, really? Like, you're just cutting yourself? But then the next couple parts kind of expl- like maybe give him a little more context why he's not super familiar with it. Yeah. Just because I'm like, dude, you killed, you fought with the Beskar spear. This is a lightsaber, essentially. What's the difference? Mm-hmm. Um, it's different. It's yeah. definitely it, different. It, it, yeah. Which, which I thought was really cool how they like, I don't know. Well, I mean, they, they've they mentioned the lore of it, you know, and like rebels and stuff, but they really sort of like summed it up for people who had it in here, you know, how it was made by a Mandalorian slash Jedi, you know, so you have to wield it like a lightsaber almost, you know, it's a very different type of weapon. And I guess you really have to like, I, I don't know if you have to be in tune with the force to like use it properly, but you have to allow yourself to, you know, it, let it be an extension of you, you know, you like he's. Like uh, in in the training, like he was fighting against it, so that's why. Like it, like you, I was like, wait, why why did he cut himself? But it, yeah, like it, it's like he seems like he's very inexperienced with this weapon, and I like that. You know, I like that. There's still more for Din to learn as as a Mandalorian. Where you know he hasn't like hit this point where he's just like an Omega level with you know threat where like nothing can hurt him. Like no, he still has like progress to make in certain aspects. Yeah, seeing heavy Mando and the uh, armor again was pretty cool. Uh, I was like, oh, shit, you guys are still alive. Or at least, like... Yeah, on that Halo ring. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. I remember was... messaging you, like, this morning, like, why am I watching Halo? I thought this was Star Wars, but... Hopefully... <laughs> and I like you know, how you're like, well, hopefully Halo will be that good. And I'm like... Yeah. I doubt it. I God, I hope... I don't know if the Halo series will look this good, but, you know, that, that Star Wars beat them to it. <laughs> but, like, I don't know how long. <laughs> hopefully the trailer this weekend will give us a little more insight to the show itself, but... That's neither here nor there. Um, him kind of catching up with them was good. Like, you know, you think they're all like kind of chummy after Navarro. And, you know, she's training him saying, like, you're working against the blade. It, it does have a magnetic force to it. So you got to kind of like l- not let it like you got to control it, but don't fight against it. It's a little hard. to. She was a little hard to explain, but. If, if she like the way she was describing it, it felt like it had like a mind of its own, you know, like you kind of had to allow yourself to just go wherever the blade wants to it seemed like at least that was the way like she made like characterized it you know something like that like she definitely said like it could either be a blessing for those who want it fairly in the fight or it could be a curse to those who don't deserve it and it's like oh is that it's it, it's definitely on that line of like is he deserving of it? almost it kind of was almost like excalibur from mandalore where it's like yeah if you're a rightful for if you're right for it like king arthur this sword will be weightless to you he could be essentially a jedi or like you know a force user or it could just be the death of him like you know him cutting his leg that could be foreshadowing i don't know but i kind of like where it's going with that and then Mm -hmm. interesting bit of lore to add yeah and then with heavy mando being a visla like because i like how they said oh this blade was forged by you know the klaus visla and you know has been in mandalore for thousands of years and he's mm-hmm. like, it was crafted by my ancestor. I should have it. Almost kind of yeah, like... Like his birthright. Yeah, especially after the whole like uh, cautionary tale of uh, Bo-Katan and her family. It's like, you think, like, do you really want to try this, man? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, with Mandalore and blood, it doesn't matter. It's not going to help you. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like you got to prove your metal to be worthy of it. You know, like 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 I said, bloodlines don't matter when it comes to this thing. Yeah, so I, I like their little fight scene. You know, he's just coming down with a knife, a little energy shield. I was like, that's that's my boy. That's that's my homie right there. He he's been my favorite <laughs> Mandalorian throughout the whole. Besides besides Boba Fett and obviously Din, he's he's my champion right there. That's that's the Mandalorian I would aspire to be. It's so cool that that we got them both back. You know, him and the armor. We haven't seen them since uh, what was it like episode? I guess episode the three of, of season episode. one. Yeah, I, was it episode three? Oh, yeah, yeah we see because, the armor, like yeah, actually, not episode. Wait, no, we three see her, four. right? We see her like towards the end. We of the see season, her in no? the finale because she's the last one cleaning up Navarro. Yeah, yes, that's right. So it's been like almost a, like a couple of years since we've seen those two characters. So to have them both come back here was pretty awesome. And and I don't know if you if you got the vibe when when they you know when they were introduced, but like, did you feel like kind of like a sinister like aura about them? Like something seemed kind of off in their relationship i don't know if it was the way if it was like filmed or like you know the contrast or something but when once she got there with them i was like something seems off like about this relationship like i don't think like they're gonna really mesh well and like after what mando's been through i think it's because of what happened with mando and what they've been through they're they're definitely at a peak point because like pause uh, i think it's pause or previous i forgot which one is the heavy mando but basically what he was saying is like there's only three of us now like yeah, I'm sure they still have some contempt. Like you sacrificed our yeah. covert and our way of life for this creature, and like given you, which d- is interesting. Like it just definitely felt like they were very. She was much more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you're not caring, like impartial, is it? I forgot. I don't know the specific word. I guess empathetic. Like she just did not seem really empathetic to him at all. Just like you're here to do it. Like let's that's cool kind of thing mm-hmm. and heavy mando yeah. was just he just felt like not spiteful but he's just like yeah we they just they're just struggling because they're not what they used to be so that's that it mm-hmm. i do feel for them when you bring it when you put it that way i was like i i do feel bad for them too yeah like there's a little bit of resentment at least from from uh Vizsla's end, you know where he i guess like like a lot of them died off trying to help uh mando i don't remember if that that was the case you know them like since them escaping navarro seems to have cost them like a lot of mandalorians and um and yeah i i liked how the scene ended where you know after their fight you know she asked them both like if they removed their their helmets you know and then you know din of course has to like stuff you know sets up to like yeah you know it's, it's happened on a, on a couple of occasions and she basically like tells him that he's out of the the conclave, right? Is that what it, what it's called? The covert, like they're the covert, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so like it, again, like we're seeing this sort of like struggle that we kind of got like towards uh, like the later end of season two of Mando, where he's seeing these other Mandalorians and how like they're not as uh, zealot, they're not as much as of zealots as you know this sort of the death uh, group is. They're technically the Death Watch, right? Because he's a foundling. Who? Like, because that's what I thought was in, um, because I remember. Well, the Children of the Watch is what. Children of the Watch, yeah. But that's why they were saying, like, you know, the Death Watch were a group of zealots that just broke off. And, like, Mm -hmm. so it's like, yeah, you guys are Mandalorians, but the Foundling way, we haven't done that for years. Like, real Mandalorians don't do that. And so he's, like, part of. And it just, it just reminded me, I'm like, oh, man, that's right. You guys are technically the freedom fighters slash yeah extremists essentially of mandalore like borderline terrorists of mandalore so you guys are just taking things way to the extreme and i felt Mm -hmm. bad when he's like please there's gotta be a way to redeem it's like the only way you could be redeemed is if you bathe in the living waters under the mines of mandalore it's like but they're destroyed and she said well this is the way and again i think that's foreshadowing what could happen in season three of mandalorean if they do get there and stuff we'll have to see what happens but i'm like Maybe he'll maybe he'll redeem himself then, but <laughs> yeah, just the fact that they didn't leave on on good terms, you know, uh, erases a lot of my speculation of what season three could have been. You know, him recruiting them and then meeting up with Bo. It's like no, this is gonna play out so different. I think there's still, I think there could be a chance for them to come back. They have to come back. They're such cool characters and they're yeah. very integral I mean, to I'm his. Sure they'll show up. Yeah, they're very integral to like what happened with him throughout the like the first season. So I think. I think they'll definitely come back. Um, but I just love the little cautionary tale that she said, like, just because, you know, 
Bo Katan thought her how her blood deserved the the sword. It was gifted to her, and that's what led to our destruction. And it's like, holy mm-hmm. shit, that is exactly what happened because Darth Maul came in, fucked up everything, and just took control <laughs> of it all. It's like that sucks. So, um, and then going back to Tatooine, just because I actually you know what I forgot. Like I really liked that she broke off the ma- the tip of the Beskar spear just because... Well, I think she melted the whole thing yeah, down, right? Yeah, I thought it was just the tip. But yeah, she probably broke it all down. But I like how mm. she's like that. Like, the Darksaber is much more deserving or much more respectable weapon. The blade, this mm-hmm. spear cannot be ar- allowed because it's basically a threat to other Mandalorians had he, if he decides to go rogue. So... Yeah, we... Which is interesting. I, I kind of like, I don't know if it's like a little bit of like a hypocrisy where she said like, you know, we don't, we don't forge weapons with Beskar reforge armor, but it's like, wait, aren't whistling birds <laughs> like, aren't, aren't those like I, Beskar? <laughs> I think it's probably like weapons that can't hurt each other kind of thing. Only everybody else except for them. Like, oh, okay. I think, I think I don't know in all honesty. That would make more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, we'll have to figure that one out, but, or we'll break that down in another conversation. Um, but just the fact that they made chainmail for Grogu, I was like, damn it, Grogu, you foundling, you son of a bitch. I was kind of hoping he would make his own actual, like, little Mandalorian armor, but that could be for later. Hopefully later, because that would be cool. Seeing Mando, yeah. uh, seeing uh, Grogu with a whole Mandalorian helmet, being the next Mandalorian Jedi, like, yes, needs to happen. Um, <laughs> but him making the trip back to Tatooine... And we see, uh, um, oh my god, I forgot the actor's name, but she's hilarious. Amy Sedaris. Amy Sedaris, thank you. As a, she's grown on me. She's, uh, I will say that she's awesome. Ever since, especially after like episode of the beginning of season two, where she's just like, oh, how much do you want from? Just kidding, not really. Like, <laughs> yeah, if it buds, I would like you know to purchase one of the offspring. It's like, lady, we all would. <laughs> <laughs> I like how she. Um, apparently has another ship for him another razor crest and it, it turns out well, he thinks it's a yeah, razor crest. <laughs> it turns out it's an old school naboo n1 starfighter yeah which i was like really that's what we're going with um but i, I, I love her little selling technique of just all right bring the man's credits but while they're doing that let me let me show you this thing let's let's talk about this just kind of take it like take it off pieces and you know he's really checking it out like can I make this work? Like, it's not, it doesn't have anything I need from the Razor. Like, it doesn't have anything the Razor Crest had that this thing won't. Mm-hmm. So, I, I like that they, she, he ended up like, all right, let's see what we can do with this thing. And yeah, and they like, were like building it together and stuff. That was really cool. That was really cool. And the end product was great. Like, the seeing it, I mean, like, I wish they kind of fixed, finished it completely where it's like a complete starfighter just because, but it looked very like still put together. Like not everything's finished on it, but I like the chromed out look with the little bit of yellow on there. And yeah, yeah, that was really cool. And she's like, all right, well let's take it out, take it for a flight, like t- test it, test it out. <laughs> and after he turns it on, he's like, you could hear in his voice, like, I don't know if this is a good idea. She's like, Oh, it's purring. Take her out. Like, he's like, all right. <laughs> And that is actually a really cool scene. After he took, after he really let loose with it, like it just went full starfighter mode. I was like, "Oh, that shit's actually really cool." Now I'm looking, thinking about it. And yeah, like, like, what did she say to him? Like, you're driving it like a gunship. Like, this is a starfighter. Like, you gotta let it go. And yeah, like, like it's a starfighter. Just, fly like it, and it's like, All right. yeah, like this thing's got some speed to it. And it does. Like, I mean, that the design, but like, it's a very sleek looking ship. So it's like clearly it's gonna fly pretty well. So. Oh, yeah. Especially in, like, episode one, even though that movie was terrible. It, it still looked pretty cool, like, flying around and stuff. It looked like it could oh, yeah. pick up some speed. I've always, I've always really liked the design of those ships. You know, they felt, like, very much, like, you know, like, single, uh, you know, single pilot, like, fighter planes, you know, like, of the old days. Like, maybe like Oh, a, like, like an old jet, biplane, you know? yeah. I could see yeah, that yeah. a little bit. Um, so that was really cool. And then we see another familiar face. I forgot that actor's name, too, but... He's been the pilot that's been around since like season two of Mandalorian. Oh, Carson Teva. Carson yeah, Teva, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, "Didn't you fly a Razor Crest?" <laughs> Mr. Kim. <laughs> yeah, from Kim's Convenience. That's right. From Kim's Convenience. I still need to watch that show. <laughs> Sneak attack. Oh, he's great. It, that show's so good too. Everybody watch that, please. But um, I like how he's he's just like, "Didn't you fly a Razor Crest?" I think you got the wrong guy. 
I don't know, I'm pretty sure you sound familiar. The guy from Navarro, right? Like, and then he speeds away, like, naked. Just speed. jumps into hyperspeed, like, oh, man. And it was crazy, because they're like, they're like, nah, it's not hyperspace, but he's gone. Like, it's fine, don't worry about it. Like, he's kind of mm-hmm. like, I already know this guy. I'll, I'll let him off with a warning kind of thing. Like, he, he's, he's, he's a good dude. Like, you know, we, we've had a run-ins, really, you know, here and there, and... Most more often than not, he's come on like on the right side of things. But one of the things that, that you brushed over was that he, you know, while he's flying it like in the boo, he makes the, the, the pod race run. Yeah, no, I was thinking was when really I was watching, dope. I was like, oh, he's basically just doing what Anakin did, but just in the Nebu Starfight. A nice little throwback yeah. to episode one. Like this whole, yeah. this whole bit was great. The, yeah, the whole thing was very much like, okay, like we, we know like you guys like certain aspects of episode one and we're going to bring those, you know, into this, this era of Star Wars, which is just like. And besides Darth I'm Maul, glad they're bringing a lot of Clone Wars stuff. <laughs> besides Darth Maul, they brought the two best parts: the pod race and the ship. So, the pod race and the ship. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that that at that moment we was taken through Beggars Canyon, just zipping around. I was like, oh shit, this is cool. Like I'm, mm-hmm. you better keep it, man. This looks awesome. So, when he comes back down, I, I thought his answer was dumb, but I'm like, you know what? He had fun with wizard. It. Yeah, I was just, I was just like, how oh, was again? It? Another throwback to <laughs> wizard. <laughs> it's like, oh god. All right, dude. <laughs> he only needed to say, it's working. <laughs> it's working. It worked. <laughs> um, and then the ending was basically, this is where it finally tied into the rest of the show. Where she's like, mm-hmm. oh, there's a friend of yours. I-, I told her I didn't know and I locked the gate. But I have, her name was Fennec Shand. And it's like, the fuck? <laughs> she's a witch. <laughs> she's just hopped over <laughs> hanging out there. <laughs> yeah. She's just chilling. And that's when she tells him, like, listen, we, we need some help. We need some muscle. And, you know, she offers him a bag of credits. He's like, it's on the house. It's like, oh, shit. I like this friendship going on here. Um, mm-hmm. A warrior. To- I guess since Boba and Fennec, like, helped him save Grogu, you know, so he's like, I owe you guys one, basically. You know, from warrior to warrior, now bounty hunter to crime boss. It's like, we want to be crime. We boss. got each other. <laughs> yeah, at this point, he's a want to be crime boss. But then it ended with the whole... You know, I got to go see a friend first. It's like, and and part of me, part of me wants to go see Grogu the next episode just because it's like, I, we got to see where he's at. But at the same time, I'm like, I'd rather maybe wait for season three just to kind of really keep that all together kind of thing. Mm. Just be, But again, I'm like, dude, this sucks that this is the best episode, but no Boba Fett whatsoever. And it's like... So you guys just don't know how to write anything else but Mandalorian. I guess that's why you guys are getting rid of Rogue One, Squadron, and all this other shit. Like, cool. Um, but Ahsoka Tom is supposed to start filming soon, so hopefully that'll hopefully it'll be a lot better than Boba. That's all I'm going to say. Like, please, please pray to God it'll be better. Well, Obi-Wan, I think, is the next show. That's I'm, true. I'm really excited for that one, so... I hope that's good too. I don't know if it's any if if these other shows can be like Boba Fett, then I'm like waste, wasteful. <laughs> well, well, I mean Deborah Chow's doing doing that show, and and she okay. she's directed some of the best episodes of, of Mando, and like just in speaking of directors, like Bryce Dallas. I was gonna Adams say was who, yeah, who directed this one, and she's directing you know two of the other really good episodes from from Mando. You know the one that introduced uh, Cara Dune, and then the one that introduced uh, Bo Katan. Bo Katan, so. Bo-Katan, yeah. So, so <laughs> man, like when I was saying like I, I this was like some like the, the best forty minutes of Star Wars, like legit. Like I think Bryce Dallas Howard is one of the best Star Wars directors. Like she deserves to be in that conversation because, man, the the filmmaking in this episode was great. Just like how everything like looked it looked so good. Like a lot of the shots were amazing. That like long take of like him arriving at that Halo ring and like taking the credits and then going out like when they're following in and out of the elevator. I'm like. Oh my gosh! This is, this is so cool. This is what I want to see from Star Wars. Yeah, no. When you when you put it that way, it is definitely one of the stronger Star Wars episodes we've seen throughout the any of the shows, animated, live action, what what have you. So mm-hmm. yeah, Bryce Dallas Howard, give her a fucking give her series. Ahsoka. Give her Ahsoka. Give her something. If if they want to do give her a movie, I don't. If yeah, they want to do whatever. Boba <laughs> season two, hand it to her. Michael, I, Robert, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Like I love your stuff. I was I've been watching Planet Terror on repeat lately just because it's in my mind. But I'm sorry, Robert. <laughs> Rod, Robert Rodriguez, you're kind of falling grace from me. I'm sorry. I can't I can't yeah. watch your shit you, anymore. You, you have two episodes to redeem yourself, and 
I'm, I'm not going to bet on you, bro. Sorry. Nope. Um, I'm out. I'm off that bet. I fold. Um, yeah, I'm willing to be surprised as always. But you know what? Uh, maybe maybe we should just stick with Mando. You know, <laughs> let, let, let's see where it, where it ends with Boba in these next two episodes. But uh, I just like Mando more. Absolutely. At this point. At this point. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You got it, man. Ah, uh, but I'm done with uh, the bashing of Boba and the praising of Mando. Anything else uh, in this episode that caught your eye? Um, I mean, I'm trying to think, but I think we we covered really all of it. You know, I, I just you kind of the you, your eyes. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't, <laughs> you know, I just don't think there's anything really. You got you got to do the help the head tilt like in a bright your favorite film. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I, but I, I mean, but yeah, I guess you know, this is this is it was a pretty sol- uh, solid episode. I think it laid a really good foundation for uh, Mando. You know where he's going to be at, probably at the beginning of, you know, season three of of his own show. Um, I like that they you know they gave him a new ship. You know they melted the Beskar uh, spear, and then now he's got to rock and roll around with this uh, with his dark saber that he doesn't really know how to use. And, um, and if you know what, it, it kind of reminded me of, it feels like he's kind of going through like a little bit of like a postpartum depression, you know, it's like, you know, like without Grogu by his side, he's developed a really like strong connection with this little dude. And now that he doesn't have him in his life, it seems like, like we said, like, why is he bounty hunting? And so I feel like it was one of those things where he sort of like devolved back into like his old habits, you know, like going back to what he knows, which is just bounty hunting, you know? So it's like, it, I really felt like him, like this episode was him trying to find his footing, like where to go from now on. So that's exciting for him. And I'm glad they're giving him that development. I just wish I could say the same for Boba. (laughs) I wish, man. I mean, again, I'm well, I'm more than happy with Boba and Fennec popping into other shows at this point, Mm -hmm. but maybe some things are just best left not to be in their own show. Yeah. Maybe the, the less time spent, uh, the better, you know, (laughs) let's see imagination run (laughs) and fill in those gaps. (laughs) Exactly. But everybody, if you uh, like this episode, let us know. If you felt the same way, please let us know in the comments. And uh, we'll see you all around for uh, the next couple episodes of Boba Fett. Um, it's a bit of a slow movie season, so not too much out right now. But again, when, when shit starts rolling, especially in March with the Batman, Moon Knight, and I don't know what else is coming out. It's going to be epic, but until then, stay bodacious. It's like calm before the storm. <laughs> <laughs> the co- the night is darkest before the dawn and the dawn is coming <laughs> yes <laughs> um but as always stay bodacious keep on ranting and um you know just stay safe as always exactly everybody be good be safe we'll see you all on the next one and you already know this is the way this is the oh, way. ring the bell this is the way <laughs> <laughs> ring the bell <laughs> go to the bell tower but yes this is the way <laughs> this is the way